Hi, I'm Kimberly Washburn, Curator of Education at the Florence County Museum. Welcome to September's Family Day at Home. This month, we're talking all about wonderful watercolor paint. All the techniques that we're using this month are inspired by our newest special exhibition, Alice Smith, a Charleston Renaissance artist. We hope you'll take the time to come in and see this exhibition full of wonderful watercolor paintings. In this activity, we're going to be using a simple household material, salt, to create a very dynamic watercolor painting. So let's get started. You're gonna to need to gather a few things from your family day at home kit. You're going to need your black paper, your three watercolor paints. We have blue, red, and yellow. You're also going to need your cup of salt, your small cup of glue, your small paintbrush, and your pipette, your plastic pipette. You may also want to gather a few other supplies from around your home. You may want to use a pencil for your drawing, and you may also want to use a small tray or maybe a cookie sheet for applying the salt to your painting. This will help keep the salt from going all over your house and will make it easy to clean up when it's time. So, the first step is going to be to create a line drawing on your paper. You can go ahead and begin doing this with glue, or if you prefer to draw first with a pencil, then you can draw right on your paper. Even though your paper is black, pencil lines show up very well. So, I could draw something simple like a flower on my paper, and I can still see those lines even though my paper is black. Now, I already have completed a drawing on the back of my paper. This is a flower with some leaves, just something simple. You'll notice that my drawing does not have a lot of details and that the shapes that I've created are nice and big. It's going to be very difficult if you're trying to draw something very small with lots of details. So use your entire paper, really fill up the space with large shapes. Now, once you have your line drawing completed, you're ready to trace those lines with glue. I'm gonna be using my small paintbrush and my cup of glue to go around and trace. Now, if you have a bottle of white glue at home that you would prefer to use for this, you could just use your bottle of glue and squeeze out the glue along the lines. But in this activity, we've given you a small cup of glue and a paintbrush to be able to paint those lines. Now, as you're applying the paint to your lines, you want the glue to be nice and thick. You want to see a nice white line all the way around your lines. So go ahead and load up that brush with lots and lots of glue. If it looks clear, then that's not enough glue. I know usually people tell you a little bit of glue goes a long way, but here, a lot of glue goes a long way. So you can see clearly that white glue line going all the way around that shape. And I'm gonna continue to trace all the lines of my drawing with my glue. You may have to dip your brush back in the glue often. That's perfectly normal to need to dip often to make sure you've got lots of glue on your brush. Try to stay neat with it. Try to stay right on the lines because that is going to affect how your painting turns out later. So I'm going to trace all the lines of my painting. Now let's pretend that I have already traced every single line that I've drawn. The next step is going to be to add the salt. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my tray where I'm gonna be using my salt. That's gonna help keep the salt contained. And I'm gonna take my small cup of salt and I'm just gonna start sprinkling the salt right over the top of the glue. This is really similar to the way that you add glitter to glue. If you're familiar with using glitter and glue, it's kind of the same using the salt. So I'm just gonna sprinkle it across now, if your cup of salt runs out and you've still got a lot of space to cover, you can just kind of 
tip your paper back and forth to move the salt over the glue surface. So go ahead and really cover that glue with salt. You want that salt glue surface to be nice and thick. Give your paper a tap on your tray. This is when it's useful to have that tray or a cookie sheet, something with a lip around it to keep that salt contained. And you can see that now the salt is covering my glue lines. The next step is to wait for this to dry. Waiting is difficult, but you need for this to be all the way dry before you can apply the paint. This usually takes a couple of hours. I'm gonna set this to the side and grab one that I made earlier today that has been drying. So you can see my salt has been applied to the glue and it's been allowed to dry. You can see that the salt looks nice and white on that black background. Now we're ready to apply our watercolor paint. I'm gonna set this to the side. And I'm gonna be using a pipette to apply my paint. Now you could use your brush, but a pipette will suck up the paint and we can place it exactly where we want it. So it'll help make sure that we're not mixing the colors where we don't want to mix them and help make sure that we can put the paint in exactly the right spot. So to use your pipette, you're going to start out just by squeezing the top You'll set it down in your paint and then let go of the bubble at the top and all of the paint will be sucked up into the pipette. To prepare your watercolor paints, if you have not already added water to your watercolor paints, go ahead and fill up each cup about halfway with water. That's gonna make sure your paints are diluted enough and will still give, give you a very vibrant color, but the paints will be a nice consistency. So I'm gonna start with my yellow. I'm just going to squeeze the bubble at the top of my pipette, put the tip in the paint, let go of the bubble, and you'll see that now my pipette is full of paint. And I'm just going to start dripping paint right on the salt. And you'll notice that the paint really doesn't spread onto the paper very much. It's really staying concentrated and traveling along those glue salt lines. Salt absorbs moisture. And so it's absorbing that watercolor paint before the watercolor paint can spread to the paper. So I'm gonna just keep adding colors. Now let's say we wanna mix colors. Right here, I want these leaves to be green and I know that to get green, I can mix blue and yellow. So I'm gonna start by adding some yellow here. And I can add a little bit of blue on top. And see if those colors will dilute to green. So I am getting some green effects there. The water or the, the watercolor paint will continue to spread on those salt lines, continue to be absorbed and spreading through those salt lines. It's also useful to have a cup of water nearby that you can rinse out your pipette in, just sucking up some water. So I'm gonna rinse my pipette in some water. So I'm just squeeze some water in there and then squeeze it back out. That'll rinse it and just continue to add color along the lines of salt. As the salt dries, as the painting dries, your salt will remain just along those lines of salt. It's also interesting to drop it and just watch the paint travel. Rinsing your pipette. Remember, you can mix colors right on the salt just by adding a little bit. I want the center here to be a little more orange, so I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow to the center. And continue to add paint. It's fun to paint with a pipette. It's a little different than painting with a paintbrush. It's a different experience. So I think it's something 
That is fun and unique. I'm gonna make the inside of that leaf just blue. And there we go. I'm gonna let this dry before I'm ready to hold it up or display it. But your artwork should be incredibly colorful and the colors really pop out on that black background. We hope you've enjoyed experimenting with watercolor paint with us this month.